Here to break down the latest controversies in the race, our senior political editor, Steve Chikaris, and Washington Post political reporter, Jenna Johnson. Great to have both of you here. Thanks for taking the time. Steve, let me start with you. What might we expect from Trump's meeting with Paul Ryan on Thursday? Well, that's what we're all waiting for. We're all, I'm sure, going to be holding our breath until Thursday afternoon until we figure out what happened there. But, I mean, let's look what's going on here. First, there's two things. Uh, one, uh, I think the idea that Trump uh, is the presumptive nominee came to a surprise, uh, came as a surprise to most Republicans, even Trump himself, who said that I didn't expect to be in this situation until after June 7th. So I think what you're seeing, first of all, is just the initial reaction is something that they didn't expect to be happening. Secondly, there's a power situation going on here. You have Trump, who is speaking to uh, the, the 10 million voters who voted for him, suggesting uh, that he's not going to give in to the establishment Republicans. And you have Paul Ryan, who, again, caught, I think, a little early in terms of having to react to this, but saying specifically, uh, I, we're not going to be bowled over just by what Donald Trump says and the kinds of things that he's been saying. And so the two of them are going to sit down. They're going to try to work this out. There are a lot of issues that they have to work out, whether it's Trump's tone, whether it's his, his ideas for policies. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I'd be surprised... Uh, if something didn't come out of this in terms of movement toward unity, but we'll see. I mean, this is, you know, Reince Priebus, the chairman of the Republican National Committee, is also part of this, um, putting together this meeting. And I think the idea is uh, they want to see a unified party. We'll see if that winds up happening on Thursday. Jenna, Trump has already said he doesn't necessarily need the Republican Party to unify, but how much harder will it be for him in November if he can't convince party leaders to back him? Well, Donald Trump's Republican Party is a little bit different than the Republican Party that we've known up to this point. Uh, he has spent months going after the party and everything that he thinks is wrong with it. He thinks that career politicians, um, you know, are controlled by their donors, that they're enamored by Washington, and that they don't re represent the people anymore. And he's been successful with that message. Uh, and so he's not going to suddenly change that message. Uh, he's taken the attitude of, you know, if other Republicans want to get on the Trump train, I want them here. Um, but that if they don't want to join, he's not going to do much uh, to change who he is and what his message is. Um, and that could be a problem for him. In November, uh, if he wants to win the White House, he needs to have the party wholeheartedly behind him. He needs Republicans out there excitedly talking about him and helping him raise money and pushing his issues and um, helping him win over the people that he would need uh, to probably beat someone like Hillary Clinton. Steve, Trump has been the nominee, as you pointed out, for just a few days, but he's already begun switching stances, which he's been criticized for a lot. Over the weekend, he said he'd support some kind of increase on minimum wage and predicted that his tax plan may include increases on the wealthy. How is the party responding to that? Well, you've already seen him sort of backtrack on both of those statements on the minimum wage. He said, what I meant to say was, uh, I, I want to see the states do something about minimum wage, but at seven twenty-five an hour, I can see how it's hard for people to live on that. And then on the tax issue, he was saying, I was talking about my proposal. I want to lower taxes uh, for the rich, but I expect that those numbers will come up in negotiations. He wasn't saying he wants to raise taxes. But the fact that he's not being totally clear and he's not backtracking doesn't, I mean, he's not, he, Republicans aren't sure of where he is on a lot of these issues and they hear him being undisciplined uh, in interviews and out in the stump and I think that worries a lot of Republicans and that's that's the biggest issue he has uh, I, I'd love to hear if this comes up uh, with his conversation with with Ryan on Thursday about how he really needs to be a more disciplined candidate not just to get uh, Republicans on board but to make clear to people who he's trying to get to vote for him in November about what he thinks about these issues the fact that he says something one day but then has to clarify it the next day uh, that's not really gonna work for the next six months if he wants to get elected Steve, do you think he would have maybe had um, his issues in line if he became the nominee a little bit later? Do you think, as you mentioned, he was just kind of caught off guard? Yeah, I mean, this is sort of what he's been doing, though, this whole campaign. He hasn't been the most disciplined when it comes to getting to specifics. He has his talking points. He has his lines that do uh, very very well during rallies and, and, and events. But when he sits down in these interviews, and we saw it when he talked about abortion, for instance, with Chris Matthews, he tends to get in trouble when he when he's asked about specifics. And so th this is the transition becoming a, for, a, going from a primary candidate to being the, the nominee. And at some point between now and, you know, in the convention, he's got to really get his points 
his specific points down because at some point he's going to have to debate Hillary Clinton this fall and it's not going to be about platitudes and, and, and generic statements it's going to be about where do you stand on these things not only do people in his own party want to know but the voters are going to want to know that and he's going to have to figure that out over the coming weeks. Speaking of transitioning Jenna Trump announced today that Chris Christie will serve as chairman of his transition team. What's your take on Christie's involvement? Well, this is a big win for Chris Christie. Uh, he has faced so much criticism for backing Donald Trump. Um, let's not forget he had to call a press conference to let people know that he wasn't being held hostage by the Trump <laughs> campaign. You know, and now he's in a position of great power. Um, in this position, uh, he's going to be coordinating um, what sort of people would work in a cabinet? What sort of people would work in an administration? Um, that's up to, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people. And so this is kind of his way of saying, uh, you know, while I might not totally agree with our likely nominee, um, I have a, a position to, uh, you know, put other people in positions of power and to really kind of uh, mold what this administration might look like. All right, Steve Chigaris and Jenna Johnson breaking it all down for us. Thanks so much. Thanks, Meg. Thanks.